Lionel Nelson here, and welcome to A Father's Note, promoting fathers through building men. It's so important that we always stand up for our fathers. We want you to know we're with you. We're standing behind you 110%. You did a Facebook story about how you went from cooking in your kitchen to technically you've become a master chef right now, and you've served as a master chef in a couple of five-star restaurants. How about share with us what that journey was like? Once you have complete, you completed your culinary school. Okay, so then what 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 happened next? Man, culinary school. All right, I I was already in the business, like okay. in, the, in the restaurant field as a young mm -hmm. as a young man before I went to culinary school. But I wanted to be taken seriously, so that degree helps on resumes. Right, right. To, to get you elevated to the higher level position. Uh -huh. I always aspire to want more, even even now today. But as right, a, uh, right out of right out of culinary school, I was managing at the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Miami. I did I worked I worked there for ten years. Um, but it was like a gradual exhale, you know, from the Hard Rock to the Cheesecake Factory, from the Cheesecake Factory to the Landry's, which is a whole umbrella of restaurant. And mm -hmm. once I moved from Miami to Nashville, is where I live now. Right. My that's when my career kind of exploded, and I bought that Miami flavor to Nashville. I don't know how to act, man. <laughs> <laughs> I bought that three hundred five up there. And it's that's what we uh. started going for for me. But the journey, like I said in in the post, uh, sometimes it can be lonely. Um, mm -hmm. Because people don't understand your vision, they think you should be satisfied with where you are. Right, right, but, right. Whatever level that is, you know. Uh -huh. And I always wanted to aspire to have more. So that that cause to be an Uncle Tom's who passed to my, to my, you know, my homeboys, or yeah. you know, it, it just it, it it was hard, it was lonely, but um, I just wanted more, so I just kept striving. You ever, okay, so did you ever get discouraged? Was there ever a time that you ever just thought about quitting, not just pursuing it? Plenty of times because, all right, so growing up in the environment I grew up in, there's only a few ways in our minds back then we thought that we could make it. You either be an athlete or a rapper or you be this big time dope boy. And none of those three was, I was a pretty decent athlete, but and, and, and I, I can't rap. And, and, <laughs> and I did the whole drug thing that went for me, so it had to be. I had to be had to be another avenue. So right. whatever the talent is that you know you have, and God gave me the talent of cooking, I just right. was, you know I'm just gonna hone in and and, and 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 cook my way up out of the hood. So there were plenty of times where. I felt like giving up. There was plenty of times where I would tell somebody a vision that I had, and they would say, "Man, you crazy! And, you know, them dream killers—they'll get you, man." So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was plenty of times where I wanted to give up. I just pushed through. So was it your children again that just kept you going? Um, me wanting to be an example for them was a main reason. Okay. That um, that that pushed me. Yeah. Right. Me right. now, and then you know, there's this competitor in me that always wants to prove people wrong. So, uh -huh. so there's there was times where I shut down um, and, and and just and and like if I approach something and it didn't work, uh -huh. and and people who I thought would support didn't, and people who should couldn't or however, there were times where I went into this like shut down mode where I just didn't respond or cook anything. I couldn't watch cooking shows because I felt defeated. You know what I mean? Like I failed. I felt I felt like, you know, no one supported me. And those feelings right there had me shut down. And this this is maybe even like two years ago. I just shut down. Didn't want to do anything to do with cooking. Crazy. Even with family? If family support you as you felt they should have? Yeah, I'll say, I mean, 
I'm way up here in Nashville. Right. You know, there in Miami. And maybe people don't know how to support, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, support true. doesn't always mean money, you know? Right, right. Support is a phone call. Support is, you know, you can do it or I'm proud of you. So, yeah, I felt sometimes where, you know, I didn't get support from family. Okay. There's a question that came up. How did you start cooking and who taught you how to cook? How did I start cooking? Man, I had this grandma um, that I lived with for a little while and she would get- At what food. age? At what age? Ooh. I was in like ninth grade. So it was okay. 13, 14, okay. 15. And man, she would get in the kitchen and put some beans and some cornbread. <laughs> and, and that would be the meal and those beans and cornbread was so good so uh -huh. I asked her or I asked her to show me how she did it and she showed me but the uh -huh. the main reason I got into cooking because like I said my first job main job was at the Hard Rock Cafe and they paid every week so it kind of helped me not right. Have right. To hustle to make some money yeah yeah, yeah. And I got in the kitchen and it was something that I didn't know that I was good at. Like the chef would show me something and I would like knock it out of the park and then I'd be like, okay, what's next? And he'd be like, did you finish the 200? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's done. What's next? And he'd be like, wow, all right, do this. And then I would do that. And then from uh -huh. that, it would build. And then I would take what someone, I'd just say it was a God given talent that I, right. I didn't know I had. Because I would take what someone showed me and then twisting and making my own right this big, so i just feel so, like i'm just running it so did you have mentors in the cooking industry i've had people at different stages of my career okay. that that pushed me to get to another level so I was, they inspired you. They inspired you. Hey, listen, you know, you can really do this. Right. They saw uh, something in me that 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 I didn't see. Like even like, there's this Jewish guy, his name is Scott Jacobs. He worked at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh -huh. My kitchen manager moved on to another store and he told me that I could be the next kitchen manager. And I didn't even believe in myself. He was like, yo, you can do it. Like I believe in you, you know, so we're going to go ahead and, I mean, it's up to you, but I'm offering you this position. And if I was you, I wouldn't turn it down. So I, I was a very, very young uh, kitchen manager for the Harlem Cafe. I think I was like 22-ish, something like that. Wow. So was different wow. people at different stages that helped take my career to Right, life. right. So you've been basically in, 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 the, in the cooking industry. For, for maybe going on 20 years now, better, right? Yeah, I'd say about 25, 26 years. Somewhere. Okay. So what was your greatest experience? What's, what is it that you really love about, about cooking? And especially working in the environment that you are working in as far as different restaurants, or whatever. What's, what's the greatest experience you get out of there? The greatest experience? All right, I'll tell a story that kind of brought me to you. Um, so I lived, I was living in Miami. I moved to Nashville. But while I was in Miami, I was a manager. I reached back and grabbed a lot of my homeboys that was trying to turn their life around mm -hmm. to, to, to get them positions that people didn't, didn't hire them. And they had to go to tea, they had to, they had to dread, you know what I mean? And they would try to try to change their lives. But when they go to these interviews, no one has ever taught them how to be in an interview, what to wear, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was able to employ those guys. And I told them they would have to start at the bottom, so they pretty much all started out washing dishes. So I would say it's about eight or nine of them that I hired along the way as I, right. as I progressed. So I went, moved to Nashville, and I was in Nashville for about two years, and I visited Miami. And my brother Robert was working at the yard house. So I went to go see my brother, he works, he works in the restaurant school. So I went to go see my brother. And then when they found out that I was there, I would say maybe six or seven people that I totally forgot about came back and was telling me stories on how me giving them a job, like saved their life. And, you know, they got, they was able to get their kids back. And 
you know, now they were uh, they were dishwashers then, and now they are uh, cooks. And I was like blown away because they all kept coming. They all didn't come at the same time. They all kept coming to say hello to me one by one. Right, right. They all had their own story, and it kind of blew me away. Wow, so, wow. That 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 was that was a big accomplishment. Knowing that I did something to help someone, you know, improve.